in this video what we do is cover five ways to achieve progressive overload because many people out there that struggle to actually lift heavy so therefore they feel like they cannot progress in the gym that's not the case there are other ways you can actually force your muscles to grow so if you want to find those out feel free to stay tuned to video first one I'll start off with is something fairly simple which is simply reducing the rest periods. For example if you normally do 80 kg on the bench press right and you normally give roughly around maybe 90 seconds to 2 minutes rest and then you go and do your next set. Say if you can't increase that weight, simply reducing that rest period down to say even 60 to 90 seconds instead of the extra 30 seconds, that will really put a strain on your muscles, you want your body to recover. But if you limit that little time and then still put the same overload onto your muscles, it forces them to work harder therefore promote more muscle growth next up is one of my personal faves which is you can either slow down the reps or do pause reps so the first one when I said slow down just means the movement so say before you may have like did like a slow negative and kind of explode up do the whole thing nice and controlled and squeeze those muscles and make sure you can feel every damn fiber working. If you do it a lot slower, I bet you may not be able to hit the reps you normally hit. That is a very good one just to get the mind-muscle connection right and really, really force those muscles to work. And I really do love doing that. There's some days when I'll literally just do like a lighter weight but do like super controlled just to really work my chest. And the next day, my whole, whatever muscle I worked, feels so full so uh, that is something I'd highly recommend in regard to pause reps it would simply be as you would normally do your rep except for when you're at say the bottom of the motion or wherever the area is where you can normally rest just hold on your chest for a bit and then push it up so you'd hold it for like a second then boom it's basically forcing your body to take out the momentum because you're literally having to dead stop and then you have to use your muscles to then push back up so that is also a good one as well but I'd highly recommend trying it out even if you're not even hitting a plateau right now any of you watching try for at least one of your gym days doing that slower version I guarantee you will feel your body aching way more the next day so yeah try it out this one now is something that's highly overlooked and it can simply be just changing the order of your extra exercises like don't change the weight just simply change the order and the reason why this one can be effective is simply because your body almost gets into a routine and it always gets fatigued probably at a certain point so if you always do a certain order of your exercises if you mix them around your body's not used to that and it kind of gets taxed earlier than others and you'll probably find that you wouldn't be able to lift the same exact weight so sticking with this 80 kg if you can normally do that as one of your first exercises sizes for like I don't know um, three sets of ten reps if you mix up the order and that maybe now becomes instead of first it's like the fourth exercise on your list you probably want to be able to hit the fourth so yeah changing the exercise order really really can also strain your muscles you're trying to make your body have to work even harder because when your body gets into a routine that's when it can kind of get its homeostasis in fitness you want to try and when it comes to actual muscle growth force your body to do whatever it can to grow like give it a reason to actually get stronger and repair and get bigger because every time you switch things up your body has to adapt and try and improve to actually fit what you're doing so that is why mixing up the order can really be a helpful thing as well of the full five I'm gonna say this is probably the most common that most people do because you'll often see someone in the gym and they can't hit a certain weight for the reps they were aiming for they'll usually just take the weights off and do a drop set I would personally though um, try and have it a bit more structured like some people just drop the weight to anything I would personally if it's the long haul you're thinking of not just one particular workout I would try and remember what you drop the weight to so some people literally just take off a plate and just just find anything nearby and put it on I would try and remember and log, okay, I managed to do my main two sets of the 80 kg, then I dropped it down to 60 and then I did such and such amount of reps. So when you're tracking it a bit more, so it's not just as free, you'll be able to know next time you come in, am I still doing the drop set to 60 or can I drop set to 65 or 70? So I would kind of do strategic uh, drop sets overall is you want to try and force your muscles to to grow so the more strain you can put on them during a period of time when you're training is the more they're probably going to progress and then over a month or so you should be able to see some sort of difference finally this is probably the one that is probably the most recent one i've seen more people do which is they'll apply resistance bands to their training so once again if we stick to this magical bench i keep talking about throughout this video like you'll sometimes see people kind of either wrap it around the bar and like anchor it to the bottom of the actual bench so even though you're lifting the same weight it basically forces you to do the exercise a lot more slower and controlled 
almost like a midway between um, doing like a slower reps and increasing the weight because it's only adding an extra bit of resistance so it's kind of like making the gravity harder. For those of you that watch Dragon Ball Z, it's almost like training in the hyperbolic time chamber. It's basically adding a, a lot more resistance aka extra gravity which makes it harder to do the movement. So if you can't like add on like an extra 5-10 kg onto the bar, Adding that resistance, it definitely does make the tension a lot harder and it makes you have to control it a lot more. All these tips are not in any particular order, so feel free to try the first one, the fifth one, the third one, whichever one you feel like. Uh, you don't need to do them all at once. I'd personally do one, see how it goes for like a, like a month or so, and then kind of track and compare. All right, guys, so that is my five tips on how to, how to actually achieve progressive overload without actually increasing the weight. Because many people ask that question, you don't always have to lift heavier, you just gotta, in a sense, train smarter and try and push your boundaries as much as you can without actually obviously injuring yourself. You wanna try and find safe ways to actually stimulate more muscle growth without actually trying to lift the weight faster than you can afford to and end up potentially having that bar drop on your chest. But anyways, people, hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please give it a thumbs up. Peace out, people, stay getting gains, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.